Welcome everybody. In case you didn't know who I am, I'm Mike Officer Greer Rock. You probably all know who I am, right? So I've been fighting, goodness, I'm 50 now. I started when I was 17 doing light infantry. I've kind of been around the block a little bit. What I want to teach you guys today is not how to be me, but teach you how you can take your training to the next level. It's all the kind of things I wish I knew um, when I first started the SCA, like if I have known this stuff, had my epiphanies and all that a long time ago, I'd be a way better fighter than I am. Anyone want to be standing pale for half a second? You will not be hit, I swear to you. All right, you're standing pale. Okay. So how many of you pale? Or half pale? Okay, so basically I everybody. Pale. Okay. All right, so the very first thing that you want to understand, and I wish I would have known this when I first started, um, don't, don't just... Go ahead and get in your ready. Can you act like a right-handed fighter, Spark? I know it goes against your nature. Okay. We'll do stuff for left as well. So the, the, the big thing that you want to understand when you line up on your pail is don't start out teaching yourself to be a linear fighter because that's the very first thing you're going to do is you're going to line up on it. You're going to visualize it as a target straight in front of you. So if you're fighting another right-handed opponent, right, What's the danger? So just go ahead and be like you're in the ready. Okay. So when you line up on somebody, how would you line up on them? Would you line up like this? Like this is this is basically what I see most people do. They're lining up on the person. All right. Now their brain is very dangerous, but the brain can't cut you. That if you're fighting a single weapon, what you want to do is you want to. Instead of me lining up on him, I want to adjust because he adjusts. I want to line up on his weapon. Now, as you can see, what this is going to do is it's going to give me an, a distinct advantage because I'm going to have his sword facing my defense, not like this. My defense is further away. I need to open a little bit. But if I face his sword and it's just a slight adjustment, what that does is it gives me a better angle to step on the, the angles. And he is almost always throwing into my defense because my defense is facing his weapon. There's just a tiny, a tiny adjustment. If you can just start lining up on somebody's weapon instead of the person, it's going to be a lot better. Okay, so I actually had my back to the camera. I forgot about that. All right, so rule number two that I wish I knew when I first started paling is taking that a bit further. Now I'm lining up on the weapon. The next thing I want to do is always make sure that. So go ahead and get in the stance. So notice his leading foot. All right. If I ever want to kill him, I need to have my foot on the other side of his foot. All right. I can't line up like this. Sure, I can't kill him, but I'm more deadly if I'm here, and I'm more deadly if I'm here on the other side of his foot. That's that's the biggest thing that I wish I would have grasped early on when I was young. All right. Was don't face the opponent, and always when you step, stepping in at an angle and putting your foot in. You don't have to be very far past the foot, all right? But you do need to be on just the other side of it to give you the angle. And the angle is what will give you the kill, all right? Yes, you can kill them from here. It's way better if you kill them from here, like way, way better, all right? <coughs> so what I did, I put my pail there, and to help with visualization, I put a pair of boots right in front of my pit. All right, and I would always practice. And this was before I, I put an hourglass on my floor. It was just so I could visualize stepping to the other side of the foot, sliding across the other side of the foot, exiting away from the sword. And I would practice that a lot. It's basically trying. You know? But everything to combat the thought of being basically a linear fighter, because that is super bad <laughs> all right now that we have facing the weapon because the weapon's the danger making sure when you step in you're stepping in on the other side of their feet all right at all times so that's how you visualize it and now what we need to do is practice actual shots all right I have practiced certain shots hundreds of thousands of times all right so that's kind of why I can go out there and I do not think, all right? I'm not, I don't have this master plan of how I'm gonna kill you. I, I don't, none of that happens. What I do is I just go out there 
and you either put yourself into a situation that I have trained for personally, um, like you put yourself into my kill box, or I put you into my kill box, and that's just being up in. And I, I, I just, I recognize it, and my arm just, it just does it. I don't think, I don't plan. The most that I will ever plan is, I'm gonna kill you with the off bite. I don't think of everything I'm gonna do to get there, I just know where I'm gonna end up. And that's super duper duper good for you. If you always know where you're gonna end up, you're not thinking uh, forwards to backwards, think backwards to forwards, way, way more powerful, all right? If somebody throws 10,000 blows, right? They practice 10,000 shots, all right? They're semi kind of, sort of proficient, but they spread that out through a whole bunch of different shots, right? If you want to be deadly at something, you practice a situation and one shot 10,000 times. Because that will make you a trained killer, like no kidding. And I can't tell you, like if you're a right-handed fighter, just because you're a right-handed fighter, and I got, I got a couple mutants here that are left-handed, but the shot that you want to practice the most, just because mathematically, that's what you're going to kill people with the most is just that that shot right there so ultimately the very first thing i would want to train ten thousand times is this over and over making sure that my foot in the final position is on the other side of his foot see i screwed up i actually lined up directly in front of him and i'm just practicing this over and over so you can do a gravity return if you want it's however you want to do it but i practice that ten thousand times in the final position right so now I'm getting good at this. <laughs> like I'm really good at this. Like, and recognizing the angle. So now what I need to do is I need to add another layer to that. Because ultimately your brain kind of works better, at least for me it does. If you learn one thing and then you build off of that to the next. All right? So we've already established that kind of getting really good at this. So now I'm gonna do that 10,000 more times except for instead of being in the final position, I'm actually gonna add the step to it. I'm just gonna reset over and over 10,000 times. I'm ingraining that whole, this is the line of measure. And if I cross that line of measure, I must come in at an angle. If I come in straight at him, I'm not gonna hit him. Like if I come in over here, he's like super close. So I practice that 10,000 times, All right? Over and over. Now, right. uh, we did that 10,000 times, We're skipping forward to the future. What we want to do now is add basically a movement, but you also want to add the block. All right. Now, I'm going to skip a tiny bit ahead. Understand that at this point, when I learned this information, I, I had already won Coronet multiple times. I, I've been a knight for like six years or something like that. And I went down to a war. Uh, Duke Quebec was teaching in class. And he literally explained to me what I've always just, I wish I would have grasped like when I was young. That every single shot that you throw, except for your opener, all right, because that's your ready. Every single shot you throw comes from a defense. All right, this is why Quebec is like this tall, fights with a shield like that big. And every single time you fire anything at the guy, you fire into his defense. He either catches you here, or he catches you here. So what I started doing was, instead of doing this, with the step, all right, and just only practicing that, the very next thing I would do is like, what's the next fastest thing they can do? What's the next fastest thing? So if I fire here and you block with your shield, he has a couple choices. He's either going to retreat from me, or he's gonna hold his ground and he's also gonna snap, most likely. So I fire snap, he fires snap, catch in house. So I catch him here. So I go snap, so I won't hit you. Just act like you block with your shield. So you block, and then now you're gonna try to kill me with the snap. So then I just bring bring myself into a defense. So now I'm gonna be training that over and over. Fire here, house. Fire here, house. I'm gonna do this over and over, like 10,000 times. Like, not kidding. Uh -huh. I actually have a couple, but I'll 
I'll just keep this one for now. So, and I'm asking this, you know, as someone who struggles with shields. Yes. Uh, and is struggling to understand how to best use the shield. I would have thought that the most effective way to block that shot would be to just raise your shield. That is true. It can be. Now, let me explain something super quick. Now, this is skipping a little bit ahead. So, what you want to try to do, or it would be my recommendation that you, you should try to block um, A and B at the same time. So, you're not in the situation that I do to Sir Bartram a lot, which I've worked on him to try to correct, is I have this shot where I come in, and I do this, and I go like this. So, what does he end up doing? He's like, block, I die, because he's not... He's not defending up here like this while he's dropping. So that's the big thing I've been trying to work with Bartram a little bit about, is never try to put yourself in a position where you have to make the choice. Again, defending this and defending this. Try to defend them both if you must. You know, it's just, a lot my of, opinion is better. A lot of fakes <laughs> yeah. make you think you're going to get hit in the head and you get your leg. And then you get yeah. so used to that, you start blocking your leg, you start getting hit in the head because it yeah. looked identical at the beginning. It really does. And that's something that uh, I did need to cover actually right now is it should probably be uh, your ultimate goal. Back on it. All right, just lay down. You lay down. <laughs> It should be your ultimate goal, no matter what your ready is, however you hold your sword. All right, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, basically seven, eight, there's like nine different shots. All right? Twelve if you include the invert. Yeah, yeah, if you want to, well, you know, and then, you know, there's a bunch of different ways to throw shots, all right? Your ultimate goal, all right, should try to be to make the opening of your, your shot no matter what your ready is, it looks the same. All right, so like you get about to here, for me, if you let me get to here on you, my shot's halfway there. All right, it doesn't look threatening, but I'm halfway to you already, and it, it comes out. But if you can make everything look the same, they, they don't have like a poker tell on you. Like, oh my God, like my Squire Ernie right now, she's working really hard on this, this leg head thing. And you can see, like, she is super hungry for the leg. All right, she's like, I mean, she's like looking at it, going for it. She wants revenge on it. Yeah. <laughs> so this is the thing I've been working on. So I was like, okay, so you need to do that whole this thing where you show them low and you go high. But if you know, if you're gonna do something like that, make them buy it and hope to God that they don't A and B you. That's how I do it. I'm an A and B. All right. <laughs> May I? Yes. Secondary reason why raising the shield is not necessarily a good idea um, is because blind yourself. if you blind yourself, people like me, if I yeah, if I fight him and I do this and he does that, but he if he's completely yeah. blinded me out, if he's using a standard heater and he's not seeing me move. Yeah. And the second time I do it and he does it, I, I'll be like, I'll get like this and I'll go to do it and I'll be like, boom, I'm dead. I, I own the entire backside yeah. and he never even saw me move. Yeah, exactly. By doing this, you, you still have visual. Yeah. Also, if you do raise, keep one eye on your yeah. opponent. Yeah, that's why when I raised, when I first looked at him, I did this, yeah. just so I could still see him. But then, and then he was like, a lot of people do do that though. They literally just bring it up their blind and as they're bringing it down their bed. <laughs> Harafi doesn't do that anymore. Good. He doesn't do that anymore. Good. All right. I'm getting better <laughs> because of you. I don't. I don't remember very many of those things, but I know the last time I brought him, I tried to get him to blind himself, and he wouldn't. <laughs> okay. I need to stand and fill one more time. Okay. So right now, I'm going to act like I'm Cyrus and. Okay, I'm not as tall and I'm definitely a little bit too fat to be Cyrus. <laughs> but I want to show you, um, in a way, how Cyrus kills you, all right? And he's, he does the same thing over and over, and it works, all right? The biggest thing that he kills you with is getting you to plant. The second you plant, you killed yourself. And that's the, the biggest thing with Cyrus. I, I got this pulling away. What he likes to do is he likes to throw a kill shot out. 
but it's basically a feeler. All right, and if you plant, what he does is he keeps firing, but he's taking a half a step to the side. And in most times, you're planting. So he's like, boom, 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 over and over. And when you're in a planted state, you can't move. All right, that sucks. So what you can do to counter that, all right, instead of always being solid and planted to the ground, if somebody starts to try to come at you, see, they're trying to come for my leg, go ahead and go for it. Instead of, oh, can you do it right-handed? Yes. Okay, I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> Especially when you look you? away. <laughs> yeah, try to hit me on here. All right, so instead of like, instead of dropping my shield, I, I find that it's just better to go go for it again. It's just to pull my leg back, either which way I gotta go. And, and the shield basically shuts the door for you. So this is about the best thing I would also recommend is using your feet for your shield work. Don't do this drop a lot. And you always want your defense to be in the same position or very close in the tight right. And just use your feet, seriously. It also helps you to rip people. You can just slide across and all of a sudden your shield just ripped them. No one does that. <laughs> Except for me. Yeah. Sorry, one, one more question. Yeah, there's so much trouble with your shield. If you go back to that position, yeah. does that, does, does doing what you're describing require a larger, a wider shield? No. no. Oh, God, no. Because I can definitely see... Yeah. Uh, just because you can see it doesn't I, mean I, it's that, within I your reach. Okay. So one of the biggest things about... Being an advanced fighter is the art of, of kind of like misdirection or fake tells. Like I want you to see the opening. All right, so you go for it. But then in reality, I left that open so you'd go for it. And now I know what you're doing. And then when you go for it, you die. Most of the time, if I'm in a tournament mindset. Because I, I left the only thing like Jade would walk up like this to you. <laughs> and you think he's being arrogant. But realistically, if he's like this, the only thing he has is the headshot. And if you throw the headshot on Jade, you killed yourself. Because he just catches you in house, right in the off body, you die. So the other thing I wanted to talk about, I did a little bit, uh, is talking about measure. All right? Measure is the moment where, this, this right here is my measure. He has to be slightly closer because my sword's longer. But being aware of measure. Yours and your opponents is like so powerful. You have no idea how many times I bait people. They think that they can hit me, and I just kind of lean out of it, and they do this, and then they they kill themselves, <laughs> like again. <laughs> so be super aware of measure, and I recommend just you know just walking around. You've been doing it your whole life. You're good at it, but the second that you get close to measure, you know change your way. Start walking like this, where you're actually coming across at people at angles. Get them to plant, as you start something, and then as they plant, then you pick that stuff. Now they're screwed, <laughs> unless they pull their leg back. Right so go ahead and be a left-hand fighter now. Oh, get back to his natural state. Okay, so this is for uh, both lefties here. Okay, if you're going to start the, the are you lefty too? Are you lucky? She's Ambi. Okay. True Ambi. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> okay. So the biggest thing that you want to train if you are a left-handed fighter, ours. the number one shot is that step, that body wrap. That's that's. If you're gonna put ten thousand into anything, that's what you want to do. All right. Once you get super good at that, you want to start practicing the setup. It's still a kill. You might kill somebody, but it's basically the backhand into the wrap, into the clear to the defense, 10,000 times. Then pick a different combination, practice that 10,000 times. This is already after you practice each shot 10,000 times. Then, then you can start stringing things together. Like for me, when I go out there and fight, yes, I one-shot people. It's not my intent. The first shot is almost always, and I will tell you, is a fake. The best shot to throw, that is a fake, is a kill shot, right? Like, when I was young, I would devote so much of my time to try to come up with trick shots. Fancy things to do and how to kill people with trick shots. And when it ultimately boils down to what I kill people with the most is, catch you, kill you. 
catch you killing it. It's literally nothing fancy, absolutely nothing fancy about that. But what makes it fancy is the timing, the practice, and making the muscle memory happen. The fanciest trick shot I've got is the spinning back fist. You know how many times I've ever thrown it? <laughs> Once. Yeah, he hit me with it. I killed him with he, it. He couldn't sit down for how long? No, no, it wasn't sitting. It was, it was walking right. It was bad. The backside because he yeah. got my he threw for my leg at the same time. Yeah. He got the unarmored portion of the inner part of my thigh, and it bruised about a pizza pan. Yeah, and what's bad is he did he did that, so he put it. He was moving towards the sword. <laughs> yep. As I struck. <laughs> But I got him in the head. It was a bad trade. It either was really way. Bad. It was a bad was trade fine. either way. Yeah, he had bragging rights for half a second, but it was not. For half, half a second. second. Yeah, it was no, the not, moment the moment I hit the helmet, bad. and the moment that hit my leg, I was like, I'm good. Yeah, because it happened at the same time. It was okay. Um, so trick shots look great. They look awesome. Yeah. No. But from a squire's perspective, don't dedicate one, your time to it. No, yeah. where I get you is either the step and snap or the catch and return. The, like he's saying, most of my kills come off the catch kill. Yeah, and that, that's for me too because all shots come from a defense. So, like literally, and then we're going to cover this in just a second. It's the 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 other thing I learned from Vivek, which was the next fastest thing, and I can kind of show that with two people. Um, but the next thing I want to talk about before we get into that is kind of like the high level fighters mindset. Right. Now, when I go into a tournament, I have worked my butt off to that point to practice about every situation, every weakness that I possibly think I have, focus on some of my strengths as well to catch them, kill them. All right. But on tournament day, I do not go in with a plan. I, I talked about that just a little while ago. Don't go in with a plan. And I'm going to use an example right now. So the current king of the West, Kenrick. Right? And I'll, I'll leave the other the other knight's name out of it. There's, there's nothing ugly that happened. Um, the big the big thing about it was is that knight went in with a plan, okay, against Kenry. Right? Up until that moment, this guy so totally stole Ken's, Ken's lunch money. Every fight that he fought the guy, like I'm, we're talking every fight, like we're boom, beat him down. All right. The grand melee just before the tournament, dude wanted to fight Ken again, beat him down. All right, so the guy is going in, okay, so when I fight Kenrick later, I'm going to do the same thing I always do. I'm going to get him to chase me, all right, and to have this whole plan based off of Ken chasing me because that's how I always kill Ken over and over. Ken didn't fight that way. Ken did the exact opposite of that, which is basically like the art of war. Get them to think one thing, then you do something different. And when Ken went and chased the guy two or three times that he tried to get him to chase him, dude didn't know what to do, plan out the door. Mind drained. Yep, and he started Burn. trying to do what Ken wanted him to do, which was close distance. <laughs> and then when he did, he murdered him. I liked him. Yeah. I think on the, the, the second or third time that the guy chased back, Ken just stood there like, bye. <laughs> he did. Bye. Like bye, like like in Tombstone. When when the, when the, I can't remember the name of the bad guy. It's he's not really a bad guy though, but he was the guy with the plan and it was bad. Yeah. Don't go yeah. in with a plan. Yeah. <laughs> so, this might be on the board of being too picky. I'm not going to okay. know if it is. Go ahead. That sounds like going in with a plan to me. No, 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 no. Because he's saying, you got me to chase you a bunch of times, but here's, and I know you've killed me, and I know that's what you're expecting, and I'm very intentionally not going to do that well, and force you out of your comfort zone. Is that not a Not plan? really, but the, the biggest thing you have to understand very about yes. in, in knowing yourself is about knowing where you are strong, and especially in a tournament where you are weak, and can recognize that no matter what, I can't chase this guy. That's going to get me killed. So that that's, that was his only... It's not like when he was out there fighting, he was thinking about it. Like the guy was actively trying to, to get him, bait him to close, and then flag him, and then slot him like he was doing over and over. The one so, had a plan. Ken learned from his mistakes. Yeah. Up until literally... <laughs> 
less than 30 minutes from their fight where, where it mattered. Because he beat he, he Ken down in the grand melee. Mm -hmm. the boots. It's the same exact thing. Ken's like me, likes to get in and come in on you and you right belly to belly and throw a bunch of crap on you. Like, but the guy would just, he's just too fast backing up. Cheese him over and over. So, ultimately, don't go in with a plan, but definitely be aware of your strengths and weaknesses. And this is where going in with the plan matters is during practice time, all right? One of the biggest things that I, I probably need to cut back on a little bit more now at practice is just going out there to fight, all right? When I'm preparing for a tournament, every single time I go to practice, I have a purpose. I am practicing certain situations where I want to be strong in because I am weak in it. So when you see me go out there and I'm doing nothing but trying to off-body you, like, and you know it's coming, because after I've tried like 50,000 times, you know it's coming, all right? But I want to be able to land that on you when you know it's coming. That's the big thing. Like, and you know, when they tell my squires, all right, next four practices is leg week, and that's all I do. I, my whole point is to leg you. I am not allowed to kill you until I've laid you, so that's my plan. I'm working on something. So definitely when you go into practice, um, and I know up here we have a lot of just, it's a bear pit and you're standing in line and all that kind of stuff. Use that moment where you're standing in line to think of, okay, this is what I'm gonna work on this time. And, and literally, like if it's something you're practicing on your pail, definitely take the opportunity to do that with people that are like living and breathing and thinking, because that's what you really want, all right? The pail itself is for me. Sure, it helps me fine tune my. Here, can you hold that square just for a second? This is this is our little mini pail. Ultimately, he was the pail. My pail is uh, there for me to recognize this. It's either here or here, and measure. It's it's never about the straight on practicing. It's always so when I go out there to fight somebody, I recognize this as opposed to trying to kill you from here. It's always about that angle. I can't stress that enough. Like, I'm beating into your heads forever. I wish I would have knew that when I was young. Um, was the angle. Because you can't kill people all day fighting them straight on. But you can definitely kill them all day if they put themselves in the kill box. <laughs> and especially it's great when they're, they're, they're circling you on the edge of measure. And they make that mistake of stepping across that line. And they're doing it in that of an angle. And I'm right-handed, they're right-handed. They just put themselves in the kill box. They died. <laughs> and I didn't have to do anything. <laughs> they did it to themselves. You just got to recognize that angle. That's like super duper cool once you can do it. No. Now, not every night out there pales. All right, uh, Duke Skeggy. I saw him pale one time at my house, and the first time he did it, uh, I had a hanging light, and he like hit it with a sword, and it came down and like wrecked him in the head, and like he had this big freaking deep bleeding. So, paling isn't for everybody. But the funny thing is, is like, he humored me and he did it. But he told me, I'm a helmet time person. I don't, I don't pale, I don't do that. But what I do do is I helmet time a lot. So he's still out there recognizing the angles. He's still out there practicing everything he needs to do. He's just doing it um, with people that can actually beat him up at the same time. And I kind of like to learn and teach in a situation where I don't have to beat you up to teach you something. You know, that's how I work with my squires mostly. Mostly. <laughs> hey, why are you look at me up. with that? Oh, you're the older squire up here. Yes, sir. You've caught more of the butt weapons than anybody. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Does anybody have any questions yet at all so far? Again, yeah. I thought it was coming. Sorry. No, no, don't be sorry. That's what it's about. So uh, I, I have a question. Uh, it's about training. Yes. So it's about pell work specifically. Okay. So um, second reaper challenge that I did, um, towards the end of it, uh, I tried to do a lot in every day. Uh -huh. I, tried to, I made a goal of uh, averaging, I think, like 500 a that, day. That is good. And uh, there was times when I pushed it over 1,000 a day. And what was happening is towards the end, I started getting a, a mild, not, you know, I didn't get quite as severe, but a strain injury. And okay. every time I would start to do the motions, my whole arm would start to seize up. I wound up talking to a doctor about it. They said, just take it easy on that arm, go easier on those workouts, and then like you can finish your thing, but let it rest for a few weeks after yeah. that. Question regarding your practice. Yeah. Were you hitting the pell with force or lightly? Uh, combination of both. Yeah, that's the problem. Okay. <laughs> okay, so Strange my arm. my uh, entire philosophy, so like if you see me, and I have been fatter, all right? If you see me, 
about the last thing that you're ever going to think is, man, that guy's fast. Like, just by, like, you're going to prejudge somebody. I don't look like I should be fast. Like, I probably hit you hard, maybe. But I'm not going to be fast. And the, the way I got fast was getting exceptionally, exceptionally good at being slow. Practicing slow. Like, when I pale, literally, that, that, I mean, like, that's how I hit. Like, when I'm paling. I, I don't hit any harder than that. I don't put force on my elbow. I don't do anything like that. If you want to do fast stuff, you need to have a speed bag, something that hangs. I can take the force, and it's like a, and like a just a, itself. it's like a big thing of foam that just like you don't wreck your elbows, you don't wreck your wrists. So if you're going to hit with power at all, then seriously, uh, use a, use a hanging bag. Now I came from a different school, so I thought he was insane with this whole light touch thing. <laughs> the, down in Arizona, it, we had our pals, and it, it was whap, whap. if it wasn't good enough, it didn't count. Mm -hmm. And so, but I got exactly what you did after pal practices. My arms were just so sore. You yeah, hurt yourself. And and yeah, you, well, God forbid you missed. Yeah. <laughs> I seen I seen uh, uh, Soren did that once. He was demonstrating the rap, and it's like you should wear a helmet when you're doing that. He went out there and he went boom. <laughs> Like, I've got a picture of Holy crap. Like, <laughs> all, all held their skeleton from that exact thing. Yeah. So what I did was I, I followed his example and started doing the Pell practice for the Reaper challenge, doing it soft. But with my travel all the time, I can't take a sword with me yeah, anywhere. Yeah, it's like a yardstick, man. I pick up a yardstick. I yeah. pick up a dowel rod this long. Yeah. You don't hey, I can imagine a person in front of me and go through yeah. the motions. And as long as I am truthful to myself about those motions and don't cheat myself, I have completed the day's challenge. I, I cut a piece of rattan to fit my suitcase and just did that out a corner in a hotel. Yeah. And just lightly tap the corner, not even hard enough to leave any yeah. kind of impression. So there's a lot of different ways to do that, but following his example is prime. Maybe if you did two sets of one through six with each of your arms, midday in the evening if you had the speed bag do one set of one through six with each arm with half force maybe full force it mattered on how your arms doing but because that'll help you when you get to the get out to the practice you're not trying to do everything and accidentally throwing light your, your mind goes we're practice click it okay there we go <laughs> Now the biggest thing about training too, if you train fast uh, and you're new, oh you're fine, you're fine, you're fine. Speed, mass, mistakes. All right, so you can't really tell that you're throwing it wrong with your mechanics when you're doing it fast. You know, but if you if you've done that slow, like if you notice my my hips and everything are turning, and my sword's halfway to you before it launches off my arm, which from your perspective makes me look fast. All right, because the the thread didn't come out. This, if someone throws it like this, you see it arcing out like a million miles. It's coming at you and you're, you're doomed. But if you see this, that doesn't look as threatening. But it literally, in the grand scheme of things, is that close to you already. You just don't know. So it's a very, very quick kind of thing. And if you could even like have your ready, this is my ready. I kind of have a this ready, this ready. I don't, I don't like this. I don't like this anymore, although I have followed it for a while. Yeah. Now, uh, Cole does it a little bit. You're trying to fall asleep. Just a little bit. Um, this highly defensive position, all right? Exceptionally defensive. This is like the skeggy. He doesn't, he doesn't do it like this. He kind of does it like this. But ultimately, from here, what can I really do to you, all right? What, what I'm doing is I'm telling you the only thing I can do is this. Basically, I've, I've got like two shots to open with. Three-ish. Kind of. That backhand kinda. can really generate anything. I know, but like from here, like are you going to be like a complete like super buff man like right there? <laughs> like it's the only way. You have to have some kind of hit me mechanics. And most people are going to pull that back and then throw it. And then you already know it's coming anyway. So ultimately when someone lines up on you like this, you know it's coming here. <laughs> you know. That's the first shot. <laughs> your Highness, how, how many different styles would you say that you have fought through your time being a fighter? Probably quite a few, huh? Fought against or 
handled myself. Literally yourself. Um, all of them. All, that's the right answer. All right. How many of you practice with you said? So sword and shield mostly? Sword and shield mostly. They've done a little bit of spear, but that's about it. Okay. Sword and shield. Sword and shield? I see you find a lot of stuff for today. Yeah, it's diff difficult to answer if so we're talking we're slow work on a tell or if we're talking actual it, heavy. It all counts. Okay. It all counts. And everything mm -hmm. you can okay. name. Okay. Sword and shield. Uh, sword and shield, sword and madu, sword and dagger, spear, axe. Uh, two swords, sword and axe, axe. And you're you're right now, right? You got two swords? Okay. I also come from a large background, too. Now, I recommend that each of you, um, as soon as possible, all right, dabble in each style, all right? And it's, it's, it's not so much just becoming super awesome and I'm good at this and I'm good at that and good at that. It's mostly about so you, while you're fighting with it, you understand the weaknesses of that weapon as well as where the weapon is strong, for reasons, all right? Because that's valuable information when you go to fight somebody that is using that weapon. So ultimately, I have fought with everything with what? Just like the China. And it's, it's not that I am like super duper good with everything, but I understand the strengths and the weaknesses of everything. So when I use that to my advantage, because I want to try to always put you where you're weak as much as I can, and if I have that knowledge in my head, then I'm going to definitely use it against you if you use a certain stuff. <laughs> so let me. Uh, oh, no, you got coffee. Yeah, I can put it down. No, 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 no. no. Your coffee's fine. Okay. The uh, sinus is ultimate sin. Do I need a weapon? Okay. If you want to. Yeah, give me that one. It's lighter. Okay, so now I'm going to. Oh, Ashley, can you pick up a shield? Is this this uh, actually might trick the sinus? Okay. Yeah, I might trick the sinus with this. I don't know. Okay. Thank you. So. Mm -hmm. Now that I've started picking up Florentine, all right, and I'm I'm making that my primary focus for like probably the rest of my career at this point. I want to I want to try something that's new and a challenge. See, he's already doing it already. So, whenever you fight a Florentine guy, right, or or girl, and, and you you pace them with the rod you're at, and they're walking off the field, every single person that is a knight is going to go, well. You need to treat them like they're a left-handed fighter, right? So what do they do? They generally push that shield over really far, all right, to protect that. Watch out behind you. I always hear that advice, and what they do is, in order to compensate, they push the shield over. So that's exactly what I see as a Florentine fighter. So they're, in their minds, treat him like he's a left-handed fighter does not equal move your shield to the left-hand side of their body. Okay, because now I'm just gonna because, because he's really there right now. Yeah. So ultimately, what you want to do is how you line up on a two sticker. If if they're strong with their left, is you deny them the left. So what you do instead of lining like this, you line right here. This is where your line is now, and you constantly maintain keeping my left away. I can't hit him there like that because he's taking my left away. He's treating me like I'm a left-handed fighter. It's not about pushing the shield over and freaking opening up his right side, because that's what it does, all right? He's taking my left away by constantly moving in this direction to my right sword. And then I only so, have a real constraint on this right. Exactly, all right? So that's how you steal the left the left from a left-handed fighter. And, and you can do it, you can do it even more if they have one weapon. <laughs> but if they have two weapons, never, Pull that shield over to cover your left and, and continue to fight how you try to fight because you just died. You're getting laid, you're getting wrecked. If you want to take that away, you line up on this and you constantly rotate in this direction. Now I've got to do this to you and I've got to try to get you to let me give you that left <laughs> by trying to cut you off to that right. And for Drew Stick, the, the, the thing that I love to do more than anything in the whole universe is to get them. Okay, so. I'm, 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 here, go ahead, come up here for a second. All right. Does she so, need two swords? No, no, she's good. So, ultimately what I'm trying to do is I'm just trying to get you to advance on me in such a way that you step with your leg forward to step into me. Okay. So we're going to be circling around, kind of do your footwork thing. We're kind of circling around. As soon as you take I don't, like to, I don't like to near you because I've seen what you've done. <laughs> yeah. So... What I'll do is I'll actually do the reverse mirror and do exactly the same thing. 
you know, that's actually cool. Now, the biggest thing I try all day long to do is to get them to step. And the, the second, and she's doing it right. She's doing this. Right? She's already doing the angles. But if I get you to step like this on me, you die. I just wrapped you in the body. And you're just trying to close distance so you can start to do something and you just get wrapped. You just step right into it. <laughs> now, to set your example, like where you're trying to, what would you like to do? Uh, to, to step like you were expecting me to step? I don't want you to do that. Okay. We're doing good. That, yeah. That's the thing. I expected Let's you to introduce a man. Okay, yeah, yeah. no, I yeah. just. Yeah. Yeah. I was super stoked because I expected you to just come like you're going to step right in on me. That's the last thing because that's what I want. That's the last thing you want to do. Okay. Yeah, if you step in, you die like that. Right, right. Like you, you can ask him and he'll let, uh, like every time she fights me. That's all I do. No, with. I only needed one lesson from her. She gave me a little pretty well. Good, good, yeah. So I like what you're doing, though. It's all about, uh, and you were on the edge of measure, and you're doing this. That's exactly what you want to do. And you want to catch them doing this to you. With, with whatever leg. If they step to advance to fire on you, you should take a half a step in and just right in the bottom. All day, until they get tired of getting hit there. And they're like, how are you doing that to me, Drewstick? Well... It's quite simple. I'm just getting you to step in on it. That, that's all it is. <laughs> they step, you step. All right. And I move, you move. Yeah, yeah. Like that. So, okay, now you're going to have to, here's, this is where it's going to get awkward. So, you are going to be stand-in, Ernie. All right? Stand-in, Ernie. So, Aaron, a lot of you, obviously, you really know my, I have my other squire, Ernie. You definitely know her. So, the, the biggest thing about Ernie when she very, when she first started fighting, is she did not have this preconceived notion of fighting as a linear fighter. Right? She started out with the hourglass, which is you've seen it before, Bernadette. It's right in front of the pail. The the, the line goes about that far. It's a full step across, and then it's it's an hourglass like this. And the way she taught herself, instead of approaching straight when she gets the measure, she goes across the hourglass like this. And she comes across, and she goes out over and over. So everything about Ernie's style is this. So now you go be Ernie. I'll be Phil Post. Okay. So, yeah. Everything is about the angle and the slide across. Everything about her, and it's funny too, because sometimes you'll, you'll see her start coming in, and she's like, <laughs> she makes that pass and goes for the leg. But what I love the most of all, is even where she's at right now, she blows me away with the footwork already. And if you want to get super good, you need to marry your hand with your feet, mm -hmm. with angles. All right. How many of you have seen Mike Tyson? Like box and punch. Okay. Mike Tyson is like master. All right. He's the master of the left hook. Like he would get you to come in, he sidesteps you. Right as he starts to hit. This is what you see with Mike Tyson. <laughs> you do the exact same thing in the SCA. You come up to somebody. I am going to be Cyrus right now again. We're going to do that. Why Cyrus kills you? Who wants to be my dummy? <laughs> okay. So, like I said, the human mind works a certain way. If you feel that you are weak, generally flight or flight takes over. You retreat. All right. If you feel, eh, I kind of, I don't feel I'm like in super danger, they're either going to advance and attack or they're going to plant and attack and hold that ground. That's what I live for. When people plant and they, they draw that line in the sand and they go, this is my shit. All right, that, that is what I live for because ultimately once they've rooted to the ground for that moment in time, they cannot move. <laughs> so what Cyrus does is he does that, ha ha. If you decide to plant, you just die. Because now he's, or working the other side. <laughs> you know, like this is, right here. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's all right. day. <laughs> but none of that was just him standing here, toe to toe in you, like this. None of it was. It was all you're planted, and he's always moving to whatever side it is. So you got to learn to unroot yourself. Yeah. Very fast yes. when you start doing that with Cyrus. Well, Cyrus is like I said, his whole his. The first shot is a bait, also a kill, but it almost always gets you to either plant or retreat, or to try to attack. I mean, it's still, it's what he wants. He wants you to root, and once you root, you're doing, you're done, and, and you've got about this time, that much time to not be rooted or you're dead. <laughs> so it happens so quick. You can't think when you're out there, 
So that's why I like to train a bunch of muscle memory. Everything I do is muscle memory. Yep. Like, so I don't think, I just kind of go out there and my body does probably. I think I'm crap. getting to the point where. <laughs> How do they do that? I'm getting to the point where I can at least get a shot off when I'm unrooted before he kills me. Yeah. But that's taken me seven years. <laughs> no, eight years almost now. Well, that's taken me eight years of fighting this man <laughs> and learning his fighting style. You should have seen. The, one of the first times that we fought, like, and it was brutal. Not one of the first times we fought, but we were at a renaissance fair, all right? And I kind of did this whole, he comes in and he fires, and then, like, I catch him, and to him, the moment his sword touched my sword, he, he literally died, because he didn't even start to return again. And I just, boom! Like, it was just a, a nanosecond. Like, he touched, he died, and he was like, and he like dropped to his knees. He actually dropped and landed on my toe, and like my toe exploded. Oh, no. <laughs> I don't remember that. I remember you telling me. But about it that. happened so quick, and from my point of view, yeah, that was fast. From his point of view, it must have been like that. That's not possible. That I mean, it happens that quick. Like the whole catch you kill you. And that's the uh, <coughs> catch kills I was talking about. That's yeah. What I get most people off. Yeah, and, and uh, ironically, I'm a right-handed fighter, so most of it is catch you here, kill you as I'm stepping. Catch you, kill you. It's my defense. Everything I fire, it's a defense. Everything is returned into a defense. Now, we talked a little bit about what Hebeck uh, taught me with that whole all attacks come from a defense. Like, if I would have known that 20 years ago, like, I, I don't even know what I'd be right now. I'd probably be freaking scary. You get Super Duke. Yeah, because before, my philosophy was everything is about the very best defense is a superior offense. And I, I'm not kidding when I would say I would probably throw about 30 blows against you and you, and I wouldn't stop till you die. That was how I defended myself, was by killing you so much that you couldn't do anything to me. <laughs> Which is totally different now, because now I kind of like let you do stuff. But eventually you throw into a defense, especially when I'm in a tournament. And everything from Quebec is he, he kills you from here. He trained this and he's trained that probably hundreds of thousands of times. What shot is he throwing from house? From house? Yeah. So generally it is a, it's funny because Cyrus does that too. It looks like a salute. So and if you fight another left-handed fighter, all right, one of your best shots is going to be that right to his face. Yeah. Because that's what we get all day long. Yeah. So that's your high percentage kill versus him, uh, and vice versa. I mean, like, what if you block from the house? What are you throwing in the house? Okay, house? so if I, if I do house, house means I can throw anything to your offside. So my plan when I'm catching you like this is probably to throw that right into the off body. The second it touches you, it just drops right in. All right? Now, if I want to catch you in tent, generally this means... I want to kill you from this side. Or I'm definitely like, oh my god, oh my god, it's not a snap, it's actually a wrap. So then I have to dip it into, into ten. But almost everything starts for me from house. House is my foundation. So it goes from here to tent. It doesn't just go into tent. It kind of, it, it kind of stops that horizontal movement as I'm coming across my face to catch. And if it's a wrap, then I can do that. I mean, if I'm going to throw here, boom. Oh. But if I'm going to throw the other side... Yeah, that's the question. <laughs> yeah, because if I go here and then here, he's going to just close the door. He's going to... I, there's so much telegraphing going in for, for getting all, from this side to this side. If he's already here, it's very minuscule for, him, for stuff for him to throw. This it's faster for me to get to anything on this side than it is that side. So his primary defense is always going to be on this side. Yeah, and especially when I'm facing his weapon too. So if I face his, if I did, like, let's say I faced him, go ahead. Just, Which shot do you want? I would you do that exact same thing. And I'll just block it. I almost didn't, like, me facing you instead of your weapon, you almost just fit that in there. Mm -hmm. So okay, let's do that again. There you go. Okay. So, no, 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 this time do it again, except for this time I'm lining on your weapon. You almost could, though. But almost harder, could, but it's slightly harder. He may, he, I'm, by the time my sword hits, 
here and has lost so much energy that it probably wouldn't have even taken his arm. And by then, from here, where, what's he doing? Boom. <laughs> Open for wrapping you. Yeah. yeah. What's up, baby? Hi. I'm going to go it, this it, way. It seems like outside? you should have more over here to deal with defense. But being a righty, he's right. 90% of me fighting another righty. This is where my shield is. This is where it stays. And it's all about figuring out how to block my head without losing sight of me. They have things that are hang up from school that aren't relevant to other people. Oh, you're fine. In I'm school, sure it does, the though. basic way that I would attack somebody, mm -hmm. right, would be I'd chop here, you'd defend yourself, presumably, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, because it's almost chop always... Chop here, and then I'd be chopping to the other side. Okay. So, boom, boom. We even call this the Vidra. We open every day with it. So, in my in my head, when I'm in heavies and I'm doing this, I'm thinking, I've chopped here, I've thrown my snap or whatever, you've blocked it, uh -huh. now I want to obviously snap to this side, to that side, to that okay. side. So, now let's talk about something that I definitely wanted to get into. This is the other thing that Hebeck taught me. Um, all, all stuff comes from a defense, right? So you train from here to here in everything you do. And when you're out there, like let's say, like Bernadette and I are fighting, all right? And I snap her. Okay, so from here, like the next fastest thing that I can do is exactly what you just demonstrated for me. It's coming around to the other side, right? So Havet very much understands the philosophy of what is the very next fastest thing they can do. So that's why when he does this, he immediately does this because he knows you're going to do that. Almost always. You're going to throw into his defense and now he's just killed you. Basically. The moment that touches, he goes around your arm, he kills you. And, and it's because he understands, okay, very high chance that they're going to do the next fastest thing that they can do in that moment. It doesn't require a lot of thought. You already know your hand's in this position, so therefore everything on that side is my next fastest thing I can do. So you know if they go here, the next fastest thing's there, so you're either doing this or this. They will throw right directly into that block. And when you train to kill them from here and here, the second they touch, you just use the energy and kill them. And it'll be so fast once you get good at it, they won't, they, it's like you're, you're a time traveler. It's too fast from their perspective. They don't get why it's that fast. And it really isn't, it's just to them it is. It's, it's, the, it's the funniest crap. And that's him. Like, I mean, the second you touched him, it's already died. And it was, there was no, there was no time delay almost. It was an instant thing. <laughs> the first few times he did it for me, I was like, Oh. Yeah, because most people, they're, they're like, they just struck and they're, they're, they get about that far. That's how far they started to pull their sword back of their dead. Like, how how you do that? I move my sword that much and you just killed me. <laughs> and it's, the more you fight, the longer you fight, the faster your brain will process the fight. Yeah, because literally, my brain goes, I see that opening, that opening, that opening. All right, if I know if you step in at me what's open because of what leg you do it with. I know exactly what shot's coming because it's based off of what hands, hand angle you're showing me. Like if you have this as an opener, I know it's coming to that side. I just, 99% chance they're gonna do this or they're gonna do that. I mean like, when I watch people, which is funny, you'll see me in a tournament, like I don't do this, and I'm not like we're fighting like this, it's, it's this. I'm looking at their hand, all right? I always do this in a tournament. Because your hand does not lie to me, all right? If your hand's this way, you can do this, all right? If your hand's this way, you can do this. I know, I, I mostly look really hard at knowing what you're gonna do before you do it. And you can't hide that information from me in most cases because of your hand. You have to show your hand and which, which angle it is. <laughs> in the tournament mode, when I am mega focused, it's almost like my opponent moves just a little bit slower. It's like when they I, give I, Hammy the coffee and over the head. Over the head. <laughs> if, if, you, if you ever get the gumption, fight four rounds with uh, with Cyrus, and then go fight somebody else. Everybody else moves so slow. <laughs> after after you fought Soren or Cyrus, you go fight anybody else, and it, and it feels like they're moving this fast because he is so fast. You get so used to think all of a sudden your brain's working at his speed, at his tempo, you go over here and it's like, 
can you move out of your own way? <laughs> I, I agree with that, but I'd say at my level, uh, Cyrus also makes me feel like I move like this. So <laughs> like, Cyrus makes me so feel like So it's like, way. I see someone else moving like molasses, and I'm like, oh good, I might be able to block this. You don't uh, measure your success with Cyrus on the number of times you kill him. You measure it by the number of blocks you manage to get in before, before you, you die. die. Yeah, so <laughs> go into practices. All right. Let's make a pact. All right. No more of this. We stand in line and we fight in the bear pit and all that kind of stuff. That has its place. All right. If if you, I'm sure if you want to do that, go off the side and you guys can do that. It's good if you want to like have this whole tournament mindset of win 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 win. I'm practicing everything that I want to be strong in and try not to be weak in. Win 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 win. Do that. But seriously, you're going to grow a lot more if you walk up to somebody and go, Your Excellency, would you like to do some drills? I would like to do this. Do you have something that you would like to do that you could teach me? So the, kind of the way I work with my squires is I, I have something I want to teach, right? So I want to teach them, all right, I want to teach them how to do this. Like that's that's my whole, okay. But, but then I want to build off of it and I want to, I want, to let, I want them to let me practice this over and over like a hundred times, all right? And then they will take over. So now I'm no longer the teacher. Now they're going to teach something to me. Okay, now I want to learn how to do the rap, and I, and I want and I want to I want to practice this really hard, Gregor, over and over a hundred times. Seriously, that's where you're going to get good, all right? Especially with a person there with you, is that you, you can tell when you do it right every time. When I'm working with Ernie. She can tell when she does it right and when she does it wrong. And she can feel it. She, she, she gives a verbal, uh -huh. Yeah, she knows it. Every fighter <laughs> knows when, because your body tells you if you're firing something wrong, all right, or if you're doing it right. It, it will always tell you. And if you can practice that nice and slow forever, your, your technique gets so good that you can do it fast. You get super good at being slow. slow. And the next thing you know, you're Speedy Gonzalez when it matters the most, all right? Because speed on its own, is 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 not the sharpest tool in your toolbox, all right? But being fast when you need to be, that's where it's really sharp and it's super good, all right? Because like I fight slow and fast, like I kind of I mix tempo a little bit. Like I'll fire something, but and then I'll just kind of draw a circle. The bigger circle, the longer it's going to take for my sword to get there. Tiger circle faster. So I'll go fast, 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 and then all of a sudden I'll do something like this, and then you'll be like, oh, because it was off tempo. From <laughs> now on, please, for the love of God, all right, just find a training buddy. I, I will guarantee if you ask me, I will work with you. Whatever you want to work on, even if it's the whole practice, okay, because I don't care. I like to train more than I like to fight. It's, it's fun. So seriously, take the opportunity to, to buddy up, partner up, um, and maybe even switch partners every week or so. Um, the ultimate goal, though, uh, through that type of training that I described is to teach you how to teach as well as to be the student at the same time. So it's like a back and forth thing. When I have something that I'm coming to you that I want to work with, I'm the teacher. Um, he gives me feedback on where I'm choking. I can kind of usually tell anyway because it feels weird if I don't do it right. I won't have the right angle. The shot didn't come in the right angle. You can kind of tell. And then when it switches around, you get to turn into the student. They get to be the teacher, and then you get to learn what they're wanting to work on. Yeah. All right, but practice, the biggest thing is the only thing to practice is squash weaknesses. <laughs> like, you know where you're weak at. I die like this over and over and over. What kind of drill can I come up with? How can I work with somebody else to, to stop that from happening? <laughs> it's like the, the, bit, the best tool that you have out of practice is literally working on weaknesses. That's all I do out of practice. You'll see me do the same thing over and over and over and over to the point you know yeah, everybody knows, but like it's not for you, it's for me, because <laughs> i got to get that fixed. Thank you guys for attending. If you have any questions, and please look me up at practices, because I will work and train with y'all. It's so much fun anyway. That's my, I get more passion from that than I think I, I do from actually fighting at this point. <laughs>